Okay, so this is a new video um, entitled Sphere, Vortex, Matrix. Um, basically what it is, is I had had an earlier philosophical kind of, or theoretical perspective of reality. And what it had was, um, I had formulated it over many years, and I had three primary philosophical principles to describe reality. Awareness, <clears throat> information, and energy which I've probably talked about in one of my other videos and and I've written about on a um, in a blog on the internet so but I also had these seven principles of uh, space frequency particle sphere vortex matrix and resonance now as I started looking into magnetism and how it works I realized that the principle of space is adequately described I, th I believe by awareness and that the other two principles of reality, information and energy, those are what had remained to be described. Uh, the problem with the with terms, uh, the terms frequency, um, I mean particles. There's still obviously particles of some kind, but the problem with the term frequency as well as resonance is they both imply two things. One of them implies magnetism, and the other implies spin. So. And also, of course, if you're going to posit that there are any kind of particles, you have to either posit one of two things, that the particles create everything, and, and thus they have spin and they're based on magnetism, or that f more fundamental forces of spin and magnetism create all the particles, all the, you know, and so that would mean there would be magnetic particles, magnetons, uh, electrons, and photons. Now... <clears throat> Um, these three terms right here, sphere, vortex, and matrix, are a carryover of what has kind of um, continued in my philosophical perspective of reality and the theoretical and the practical. I still, there may be some details to be worked out, but um, reality to me is composed of awareness, information, and energy. Those three terms can describe everything. Awareness is also space, as I mentioned, and that has to do with enlightenment, spirituality, all that kind of stuff. Whereas <clears throat> the principles of information and energy are just two different terms for one principle, which is spin, magnetic spin. Um, and information is magnetic spin direction, energy is magnetic spin force. And there's only two spins, clockwise and anti-clockwise, throughout all, all of creation. So, basically, <clears throat> it comes back to the principles set forth by Albert Roy Davis and Walter C. Rawls, that there are just two fundamental magnetic spins accounting for everything, as well as, you know, the, the, you know, the Tao, Tao Te Ching, which was probably the first really clear exposition of this principle, the Tao, and then yin and yang. So, um... Those are the fundamental principles, the forces, spin. Um, and I mentioned also in other videos that within the magnetic spins or magnetic spin frequencies and, and magnetic spin structures that you have electrophotonic um, tonal structures. So that accounts for the frequency part. So you have the spin, magnetism, resonance, and frequency all together and, and the particles how they fit in there they fit in somewhere but it's a whole nother question but then what's left is how do you describe once you have you have these basic forces mapping them out is one problem but then and and you know defining all the different substances such as or all the different properties of reality as I, I, I talked about a physics of psychology a physics of reality which would be based on seven principles magnetism um, electricity, light, uh, plasma, gas, liquid, solid. Now, the question then becomes, when you take these forces, these fundamental forces of magnetism, electricity, and light, and you, you apply them in whatever kinds of ways through spin, only through spins. I'll make that really clear. Only through these fundamental primary magnetic spins. Then, um, what are the basic shapes, patterns, forms that result not only within those structures but out as well um, within plasma, uh, within the you know plasma that's all throughout space and the the gases and liquids and solids. 
So that's where these three principles come in, sphere, vortex, and matrix. So the basic premise is basically is like this. This is the completed kind of picture, which is not as clear, and then I break it out into all three elements. But what you have here is you have a sphere, and you have vortices within it, and which absorb and release energy substances, etc. And then you have a matrix which circulates energy, you know, substances, etc. throughout. Now, um, when you break that up into three elements, here you have a sphere. A sphere is an envelope or a membrane. So you could look at the human body as a sphere. You could look at an automobile, the, just the basic form of it as a sphere. You could look at, you know, a planet, a sun as a sphere, a cell as a sphere. You get, you get the idea. It's basically this fundamental kind of form that describes the overall function um, of a given, you know, structure, pattern, etc. in nature. Um, then, then you have vortices. You have a you have the principle of vor vortex or vortices. These vortices happen within and around spheres, and they happen obviously through, as I mentioned, spin. Uh, just as uh, spheres, I'm not sure, sure exactly. I'm assuming that they're you know produced by magnetic spins that then spin together a bunch of particles and you know it's all spin based but but the sphere is formed through spins and then within and around the spins within the sphere you have this formation of vortices which which are basically conical structures that absorb and release uh, various substances materials etc and what they do is um, yeah so there's vortices um, then what you have, what grows out of the vortices are matrices. So like a matrix like this, a brachiated network that, you know, deals with circulation, vortices which absorb and release substances and energies, and then a sphere which kind of is like an envelope, a membrane, a container for all these things. So when you put them all together, here you have something that looks like all the different structures we have in nature. Um, whether you know you could you could take that same principle and apply it to a tree, a car, a, a house, uh, a, a house. Just to give you an example, it ha it has a sphere, an envelope, which is the walls, roof, etc. It has a uh, it has vortices, which would be the doors and windows, openings, basically. As well as you could look at it more minutely as you know. Uh, you know where water comes in uh, to the house through you know faucets that's a vortex and electricity comes through a light switch that's a vortex as well but that's getting more you know uh, but it also a, a house has a matrix a matrix of water pipes uh, gas gas pipes as well as e electrical um, wiring so as well as the matrix the whole matrix of the structure of the house which is all the you know the studs and the foundation and you know all the rest which would actually hold it together structurally so you see it's the same thing it's the same principle and if you take it you can apply it to any structure it, it, every structure always has these three principles sphere vortex and matrix so this is important not only for understanding reality but more importantly from a human standpoint it's important for designing technology these three principles are very important for designing better technology. One of the things we have to look at is there, there's a, 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 a interplay between these three, which is you have this the the matrix, the the matrix within a system, this you know net network or brachia, brachiated network that circulates substances, etc. But that grows out of your vortices, which are your spins within the system, which actually carry out real specific functions within the system. But the most fundamental principle is the sphere. What kind of envelope? What kind of membrane? It's like when, um, you know, for instance, I, I have this example, which I put in other videos, some of which I think I deleted, but I had written something on, on the blog as well, on, on one of my blogs, which was that if you want to create a flying craft, you do not model it after a bird because a bird is a very 
not the most, but a very inefficient flying craft or creature. They are a land-based creature that has adapted wings to fly. They are not an air-based creature that actually just swims through the air. So if you're going to create craft that are intended to fly, you would not model them after birds. You would model them just as you would underwater off of, you know, sea creatures. So because they are better adapted for, you know, swimming through the water, you want a, a craft that would swim through the air. And of course, it, it basically, from my standpoint, I really, as I think about it more and more, regardless of any electromagnetic, uh, you know, flying saucer, any kind of nonsense like that, you really do not need wings to fly. See, that's an assumption that has taken our whole um, technology in totally dead-end directions. In fact, all you need is a sphere, vortices, and a matrix to hold it together. If you have these three principles and you divine, design them properly, and you design the form to carry out and to be able to carry the function of the vortices, and with the right matrix to hold it together, you could create a flying craft that does not require wings. In fact, if you look up flight, the whole question of flight, all it says is you need lift, uh, a, 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 a means of control, a, a means of lift, um, and a, a means of what? Propulsion. So you see, you don't need wings for lift necessarily, and you don't necessarily need the standard sense of rudders, if you will, for control. And you don't need the typical version of like a jet engine for propulsion. In fact, all you have to do is create the right kind of sphere, the right kind of vortices, the right kind of matrix, and you can have a craft that would, whether it runs, it doesn't matter what it runs on. It could run on, you know, on atmosphere, on air. It could run on plasma. It could run on electricity. It could run on light. It could run on magnetism. It could run on some combination. It's all a matter of what kind of sphere that you create. The vortices and the matrix. So, matrices. So that's it. So that's, I think it's, it's an important idea. I want people who, anyone who's designing technology to think about what they're creating in these terms. Sphere, vortex, matrix. And make better technologies. Thanks.